So much of that blood pressure raising stress you deal with in traffic is not about the traffic and the cars. It's about the analog, unpredictable, unfathomable human behaviors of the people who are driving the cars. Here are the top five of those that I think might just go away after we get enough self-driving cars in the mix. Number five, pointless gaps. Even in the midst of the worst gridlock traffic, you ever notice there's lots of space between some cars? Those holes should be filled with car, not empty air. You yell at the guy ahead of you, pull up. You're leaving me stuck in the intersection. Well, self-driving cars will know that. They're precise, they're computers, they're boringly predictable, but they know how long their nose is, they know how many inches are there between them and the next car, and they never get caught looking at their phone when they should be moving ahead. Number four, the blowing of horns. Let's face it, nowadays blowing your horn is more likely to get you shot than home earlier. And it's also, shall we say, a low bit rate form of communication. Did you just blow your horn because I'm in your way? Or look up from my phone at the green light? Or don't you see there's no left turn here? Or you're just a you just like to cause chaos. Self-driving cars, especially when they have vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications down the road, will have a much quieter and high bit rate way of communicating. Number three, right lane rarity. You know the thing, when you've got the right through lane here and the right turn lane there at the same intersection, all jamming into the right far lane on the other side of the intersection. The folks here in the through lane think they're never gonna get in because the folks in the right turn lane have that right on red right of way. Self-driving cars will hopefully have some decent manners program, combining right of way logic with the old zipper courtesy. Not that hard, folks. Number two, merger standoffs. Whenever two lanes come down to one, you get this weird little chess game. The lane that's going away, should it move in early to be polite, but leave a huge gap ahead? Or should it go to the head of the line and move in late and get everybody behind thinking you're a real putz? This is a real difficult one. To be honest, they've done studies in several US states that say, despite the optics, you should go to the head of the line and jam in at the last minute. It's better for all traffic. Yeah, try selling that on real world streets. Self-driving cars will know how to do it best, and it probably means go to the head of the line and get in at the last second. The number one thing self-driving cars won't do that you're gonna experience in your commute today is blocking the box. And so much of this is human behavior. I mean, why do we go out into the intersection when there is no room on the other side of it? It's this weird emotional bet based on hope on one hand and the guy behind you blowing his horn for you to roll the dice. None of that makes any sense. Self-driving cars won't have these issues because they're immune to the guy behind them honking saying go and they have all kinds of sensors to tell them, no, there's no room for me. Plus, with vehicle to vehicle, the cars that are already across the intersection will tell the ones that are waiting to do so, there's gonna be a space for you in X number of seconds. This is very precise. Notice how much of this is actually about removing flawed psychology as much as adding new technology. More top five lists await the car lover. Go to CNETOnCars.com, click on top five.